from this view now, again, the very bottom hole, this is a repeat, is where the high pressure oil is forced through that passage and into the cylinder. You can see the piano wire moving now. And I'm not sure if I showed it before, but where the pipe cleaner is going in there, that little side hole, which is this passage, that's where the low pressure oil enters the pump so that it can be pressurized and then in turn forced into the cylinder and th that uh, check valve uh, valve assembly that I showed you before with the two ball valves is what determines whether it's pressure or suction. And now to further confuse the issue you'll see that the passageway here in the bottom which I'm showing here with another piece of wire also connects to the valve. So we've got this passage, this passage, and uh, the copper wire passage, and this high pressure passage here. Now let's see if I can tie this all together so you understand what's happening here because I do not intend to do a cutaway of this. It's just too difficult to do a cutaway uh, with all these passages and it takes too much time and very few people have been watching these videos here so I'm trying to minimize what I'm doing here. And then you know I always get somebody that it's kind of discouraging but I know that's what they're trying to do is that uh, you know I go to all the work and then I'm, I'm turning a, a bolt or not or something and, and their only comment is you know you're using the wrench in the wrong direction. Now let's take a look at what happens when I am uh, jacking a load that is pumping and this is the pump. In order to do that this valve would be closed the ball would be in there and we would tighten that up reasonably tight so the the oil couldn't flow the wrong way and then this little valve body would be in there and as we pump down, this piston would force the oil through this check valve and it would enter the passage here where this wire is and the oil, the pressurized oil would enter this cylinder and raise the ram. And when I back it up to take another stroke like this, the one check valve would open would be uh, closed and then this little check valve would open by suction and draw unpressurized oil through this passage into the pump. And then as you go down the cycle would repeat itself over and over with each stroke. <clears throat> when we're through with the job we want to lower the load and in order to do that we back out this screw which opens up this little valve the ball comes back no spring it just comes back due to the pressure and then the oil will flow because you got weight this won't go down unless you're there's weight on it or you're pushing on it and that forces uh, the oil back through uh, this passage here and into the reservoir for storage until the next use. Again, that's just a storage can. And those are the, uh, the two cycles of a little hydraulic jack, which is nothing more than a, a pump and a cylinder. Now, if you have a port of power sometimes, the, the, uh, as you know, the pump and the reservoir is in a remote location. It can be two feet away or it could be a hundred feet away connected by a hose and it would uh, perform the same operation of uh, raising the ram inside of a cylinder. Quite often a longer cylinder. Just a little bit of related information that may or may not interest you but you, as you well know these jacks are really made to use in the vertical position as you see it now and some of them will work on their sides but it's usually on one side or the other not both sides and it's going to depend on where these 
holes are so I, I believe it's this side that allows it to uh, to work on on that side if you're doing if you're pushing something in that position but they never work upside down unless they've been modified and I had a neighbor by the name of Tony Wozniak that was a jack repairman and he would he would fix jacks for people if they wanted to use them upside down and make a press out of them but essentially what he was doing was taking them apart like this and installing a pipe a tube onto one of these holes that would go up like like this so that when you turn the jack upside down like that the jack was able to pick up the oil that would have been in the reservoir in that position so that that's what it was all about and you see a lot of people using these upside down on uh, on presses but some of them have been modified uh, such that you don't turn the jack upside down but in fact the jack is situated so that you were your ram is underneath it like this you've seen them at the bargain stores built that way that way they can use a jack off the shelf and not spend the extra dollar you know I've been talking a half hour about pumps here and uh, I'm spending way too much time but I haven't really talked about the mechanical advantages of a pump and, and that's what this is all about and what we're doing here is uh, pumping the oil with a small diameter piston and forcing it into a larger cylinder and the ratio between the two is what gives us the mechanical advantage now in measuring this small one so actually I'm going to measure the right here and then I'm going to measure the diameter here and actually I've already done that how convenient and you can see that the pump is 440 thousandths and the cylinder is 940 this is in inches now so really it's uh, 44 over 90 so you can see what the ratio is there uh, on the the diameter but what we're really interested in is the area not the diameter but of course diameter determines the area so I have to take the radius of those and then use the formula as you learned in sixth grade uh, pi r squared to find the area so I'll do that off camera so there's the area of that cylinder and uh, 694 is the area of the bigger cylinder and if if I was to round those off just to make this a little easier let's call this just a uh, 0.15 and let's just call this point uh, seven you know, oh so now you can see the ratio it's a uh, 15 to 70 or if we reduce that just a little bit to make it uh, a little easier we have a ratio of uh, let's see what did I come out with well, about one to five approximately a one to five ratio so what that one to five ratio means is that this cylinder here is five times the area of the little pump cylinder so if, if I were to exert 100 pounds of pressure into this I would actually be able to raise the vehicle or, or the load up 500 pounds but in fact I'm getting even more mechanical advantage than that because of let me show you on the other jack here because we have a mechanical advantage here as well and we have that jack handle I showed you before that's about one foot long but it also depends on where your hand is situated on that jack handle is it way out near the end or if there's not much load maybe you're way up here close so that's the the ratio and that's the advantage that you're getting from the hydraulics and if you want more advantage you would use uh, even a larger cylinder up here and somebody told me that if you look at a lot of these jacks if you look at it at a 10 ton or a 20 ton a lot of times the size of the of the pump is about the same and they just increased the diameter of uh, of the uh, the ram here but I'm not sure I didn't really check that you have to check that for yourself 
So that's your mechanical advantage that you're getting both with the hydraulic and uh, with the levers that allows you to lift 4,000 pounds here with, I'm not sure what the, what the uh, amount is on the end of this, but I you might still be putting 75 pounds or so because if, if you're lifting something heavy, you know that, that it, uh, it gets harder and harder to, to, uh, to pump the jack. I'm going to finish off the rest of this uh, video, this experiment with this other jack because it's also a two-ton, so it's similar. Probably the uh, the diameter of the pump and the cylinder is the same or close to the same, who knows, but it doesn't matter. But what I've done here, first of all, is I've taken this uh, pump here, opened it up, and I'm measuring the distance here from the hex up to where the paint mark is. And that is the length of the stroke and that's uh, about 820 thousandths and I wrote that down, 820 thousandths. Now by putting the jack under an indicator as such, you see there's an indicator there, and I'm going to pump it one full stroke that's 820 thousandths here, and we'll see how much the, uh, the ram raises. Now, we, we know it's going to be less because you have to give up something. We had great advantage over here, uh, what I told you, mechanical advantage with the fluids, but there is no free lunch, even though half the kids in every school think there is. So we have to pay the piper here. And uh, so let's see what we get. I'm going to pump it one full stroke and watch the indicator. I better zero it out. Boy, when you extend these indicators, you got no rigidity. You got nothing. Okay. And there we go. And it's a hundred. I got to do that again because I had everything too loose. Let's wreck. Now watch again as I move the pump one full stroke. 160 thousandths approximately. I'm going to call it 160 for sake of discussion here. So in review, the cylinder had a stroke of 160 thousandths, the pump had a stroke of 0.820, and uh, that, so the ratio is 0.16 to 0.82 ratio. Now if you reduce that, again, it comes to approximately a 1 to 5 ratio. Hey, that sounds familiar. Wasn't that the same ratio that we had here with the hydraulics? Remember this is uh, uh, th this is done by actual uh, empirical, I guess that's the word, testing with measuring instruments and the other was a calculation and they're the same. Hmm, very strange. So what we gained there in the hydraulics we really lost in the travel so that was a one to five or five to one ratio so you see they kind of cancel each other out I'm, I might not be using the right words because I'm not a physics instructor or a math instructor for that matter but how did you like that little uh, demonstration on the jack now just for the fun of it I think I'll put the jack back together and there's that other gasket that I was talking about that goes on the bottom of the of the tube here so we'll see if I can get it back together without any leaks but I'm not spending any more than five minutes on it and out it goes well there it is it took uh, ten minutes including putting the oil in with this little funnel and it took about three quarters of this cup full of oil and uh, it now works better than ever because remember it didn't work at all to start with because it had not enough oil in it. Now I must emphasize that in any hydraulic unit you cannot have any air in the oil. It must be bled out. Remember that air is compressible whether it be the brake system in your car or a jack or wherever there's hydraulics involved. No air in the system. Well, here it goes. Good as new, and I brought that uh, oil level right up to this little hole. And that completes this video. 
on the hydraulic jack and what makes it work. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure and watch my other videos. Leave comments. Thank you for watching, and this is Tubal Kane saying, so long for now.